Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We often take a look at the bad stuff that Hasbro has produced when it comes to the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World line, but this time we're going to take a look at something that's actually really nice, and I would probably say the best in the line overall when it comes to this particular species. I am talking about the Alpha Pteranodon figures that had come out from uh, Hasbro again for the Jurassic Park line, made its debut in the Jurassic Park 3 line, and uh, has had a few different repaints as time went on. And as you can see, we are taking a look at two different versions of it right now. There are three, to my knowledge, overall, and I do have the third here as well which would be this version, but I have actually reviewed this version in the past, so I didn't feel the need to have to bring this one in and review it again. Only the other two variants that we haven't taken a look at before. But honestly, when it comes to the Pteranodon, I feel like Hasbro spared no expense. The Hasbro Pteranodons are probably my favorite figures to ever appear in anything that Hasbro Jurassic-related had created except maybe the Allosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus that came out in the Jurassic Park Dinosaurs line. I might, you know, look at those a little more fondly, but when it comes to pterosaurs and stuff, I definitely feel like that was one of Hasbro's strong points, at least in the Jurassic Park line, and these, again, are two perfect examples of why. So let's go ahead and without further ado, jump to a closer look and check both of them out from there. Now, since I have actually gone over the sculpt of this figure and everything again more thoroughly in a previous review, that means we don't really need to go over the sculpt again here with these versions, but we do, of course, want to take a look at what differentiates these versions from the first version I had reviewed quite a long time ago, and that, of course, would be the coloration. So this version here sports a really cool dark bluish tone, and that is something that you see through the course of the entire figure. I would say probably the primary body color of the pteranodon but as you lead up into the crest you can see we've got a very cool patterning with a light kind of like a yellowish brown tone of color as you move up through you can also see a little extra variation of color there around the eye as well as a green eye with a black pupil and it looks really really nice honestly i think the colors definitely complement each other quite perfectly and there's actually even more variation of color than what you see basically like, you know, at first glance. Because, you know, when you take a look at it, you might see only the dark blues. But as you move up here into the crest, you can actually see some black tones. And then again, we transition back to the bluish tones. But uh, actually, those blues might be even a little bit brighter than the primary blue that we see. But you can even see some of those blackish tones creeping up here into the beak and stuff. Now, I don't know for sure how the figure was actually painted, but I feel like the mixture of the blue and black maybe might, you know, possibly be similar to the way that Mattel kind of creates their figures with a little extra coloration kind of sprinkled throughout. Mattel does that quite often with their figures, and maybe that's how this one was created. And actually, I would say all of these pteranodons were created, but I could be wrong about that. It may all be paintwork. I'm not too sure. But as you continue to move back, again, you've got the blue leading back into the back of the body. I'm trying to be extra careful with this one because this one does have the batteries in it so we can hear the sound and the head and neck is super touchy and we'll have this thing making pteranodon noises all over the place. But as you move back here into the back, you have some nice brownish tones that pick up and then you have like some like dry brushing it looks like of blacks that has been kind of run over some of the brownish areas you can also see we've got a little you know damage area kind of dino damage as it's called right here with the side of the pteranodon ripped open you can see some pinkish or reddish tones for the inside of our pteranodon as well as some off whites which would be of course for the bones of the pteranodon and you can also see a button here on the back and that's how we activate the wings flapping but that brown continues to run all the way down through the course of the back and i think it's really nicely applied like it looks extremely realistic with the way that they have applied that brownish tone and then as you move back into the legs you continue to have that mixture of blues and blacks again something that we had seen up there in the face you see that as you move all the way out into the feet of the pteranodon again both feet now it's losing focus one thing though that's pretty surprising to me when you have a pteranodon that's so nicely painted there's so much color to it it actually doesn't sport nail paint and you can see that here on the hands you know as you lead out into the wings again there isn't any actual nail paint it looks like one kind of is because of the black again that's sort of mixed throughout the course of the bluish tones 
but the figure does that's like the only thing it's missing when it comes to the color is uh nail paint but as you move out into the wings again you can see a mixture of the blacks and blues as well as some light blues that kind of creep in from the lower part of the wing and as you can see there is a plethora of varying colors on this and that's one of the things i think that is so impressive about these pteranodon figures is just how much coloration you'll find through the course of the figure and how often the colors kind of change you could just see when it comes to having a fully painted look it's extremely impressive on these pteranodon figures and if we turn this one around and we look at the underside you even have a light bluish tone that moves down along the underside starting in the throat follows through the entire underside of the pteranodon there out toward the tail and you continue to see the mixtures of blues and blacks through the course of the underside as well and you also have the same coloration the same style of color here for the underside of the wings as well again with the mixtures of blues and blacks and even those light bluish tones moving out it's kind of like a light bluish gray it pretty much replicates the same style of paintwork that we see on the upper side of the pteranodon but obviously not exactly the same as far as the patterning and stuff so when it comes to a pteranodon like far and away one of the nicest paint jobs that i've seen on any of them and you do even have the jp3 stamp there on the underside of the wing but that is an excellent excellent pteranodon as its wing drags along the backdrop right there definitely one of my favorite pteranodon figures to ever appear in the jurassic franchise but honestly it doesn't stop there because we also have this version and i actually think i might like this version a little bit more than the one we had just taken a look at now this of course is the same sculpt but we have different coloration for this one so you have instead of the black and blue mixture this time you have lighter and darker greens moving through the course of the pteranodon as you move up into the crest you see a gorgeous blue pick up and pattern all throughout the course of the crest you do notice one thing that's a little different about this one i would say when it comes to the coloration is the fact that we don't have extra variation of color around the eye but i don't feel like this one really needs it especially because you can see so much as far as the varying tones of greens through the course of the beak all the way through like there is a good bit of that mixture of colors you can see it here on the underside of the throat as well and even more so when you turn it around and look at the other side again there's so much as far as that coloration goes moving through and again those beautiful blues we do have a yellow eye with a black pupil and my camera is going to panic because again it usually hates stuff that's green for some crazy reason i don't know why but as you move along through the back yep definitely gonna have a fit about this one okay we're just gonna have to deal with it i think because it's just so big i don't know that we can really escape it but as you move along the back of the pteranodon you again have the variations of darker and lighter greens and the way that they've colored the pteranodon it's so smoothly applied so naturally applied and you could see it move the entire way through all the way out through the rest of the pteranodon one thing that's a little different though you can see we have the jp stamp on the leg of this one rather than the jp3 stamp that we had on the underside and this is obviously one i think that came out at a later date maybe in like the jurassic park dinosaurs line possibly if i recall correctly i could be wrong about that but you can obviously see we do have the damage area again painted out right there there. and as you move out here into the wing you can see we've got those beautiful mixtures of greens again out here and it actually looks like we have three different shades of greens potentially that have been applied or maybe it's just two shades but some are applied a little bit darker like some areas it's darker some areas it's lighter but you can see that coloration runs the entire way out definitely darker out here on this part of the wing compared to right here which you know may look a little bit off because the transition is so abrupt you know right there between these two areas areas but for the most part i still think it looks really cool again the same thing as we move over here to this side of the wing so much variation of color and here's one instance where you can really see like a lighter green creeping in which is why i feel like there's three potentially shades of green at play on this one but then when we turn it around and we take a look at the underside again you can see we have a light tone moving along the underside pretty much the same you know as the other one had where it starts out in the throat and runs down along the underside of the pteranodon it's a little bit more intense when it comes to the lighter tone on this one but still nice and naturally applied and just like the other one we have the same style of coloration moving along the underside with the you know various tones of greens and stuff and you'll see that on both sides here of the pteranodon if we open the mouth something i didn't do on the other one because again like i said it's so touchy with the batteries in you can see there is a tongue sculpted out in there a little bit of waviness to it and we have a pinkish tone for the tongue no real coloration like outside of the variations of greens on the inside of the mouth and the upper side but again it does have 
coloration for the tongue. You also have articulation in the neck, which can go left and right, kind of move up and down as well a little bit. And then, of course, you also have articulation in the wings, which can go up and down. And you can, of course, move these areas. And you have articulation in the legs, which can swivel, basically. So some decent articulation for the pteranodon on top of everything. Maybe not the most naturalistic articulation right there because of the skin, you know, kind of running up from the leg toward the tail. But overall, again, I would say these pteranodons are absolutely some of the best figures that Hasbro had ever produced for any of the Jurassic lines. Now, as I mentioned, this one has batteries and, uh, you know, just trying to review this one without it making noise constantly has been a little bit of a hassle. But we actually have the chance now, let's move this one out of the way, the chance now to listen to the noises. So let's go ahead and hear the first one. So very clearly you can hear a really cool pteranodon noise. It happens whenever I move the neck no matter what. I'm just wiggling it. It's usually going off on me. Also, when you have this button here to operate the wing flapping action feature, you will hear the wings as well. So obviously if you go slower you have more of the natural sound. If you go faster... basically just have that wing flapping noise on top of that and now we have the head going again because i touched it we also have the you know damage wound over here on the side which does also have a button so basically it makes the pteranodon scream it sounds like oh i got the noise of the neck going again but it basically makes the pteranodon sound like it's injured you're basically pressing its injury right here which has got to hurt so i like that as well again there's just so much to love about these pteranodon and if all of that wasn't enough the fact that they are huge is also really fun uh, definitely a very big pteranodon figure maybe the biggest that we've had in the Jurassic franchise as a whole they are definitely bigger than the old Kenner version and maybe bigger than the Mattel but it's been a little while since I actually had them next to each other but I'll take a quick measurement here even though I have measured this in the previous review that review is kind of old so uh, you know it's been a little while I'm sure since you guys had seen anything on this one because nobody really reviews this stuff nowadays but for a wingspan, about 23 and a half inches or about 59 and a half centimeters, even a little bit over that heading towards 60 centimeters. So it's pretty darn big. And of course, we're going to have that going again. And then for a length, if you go from the beak to the foot, about 10 and a half inches or around 26 and a half, closing in on 27 centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect A human being next to our massive Hasbro Alpha Pteranodon. And you can see again, it's definitely quite sizable. I have, like I said, reviewed this in the past, so I don't think we need to do too many comparisons, but I do want to compare with one of Mattel's larger Pteranodons. So... There is one of, and actually we can move that out a little bit, but there is one of Mattel's standard sort of Roravor size range Pteranodon figures, which actually they haven't released one in quite some time. But uh, you can see next to the Hasbro version, the Hasbro Alpha Jurassic Park 3 Pteranodon, clearly the Mattel version doesn't quite match up in size. And if we pick them up, it's going to make a loud noise, of course. But if we hold them here from up above and you look at them, Fix that wing a little bit. Clearly, you can see again that the Mattel version is quite a bit smaller. And I know I said I only wanted to do one Mattel comparison, but here is the largest Pteranodon that I can recall Mattel releasing, which was the basic version. And you can see even the basic version is a little bit smaller than the Hasbro Alpha Pteranodon, which is definitely showing you that this is the reigning ruler of Jurassic Pteranodon, if you ask me. And as I said, there was also this variant out as well, which there is a review up on my channel for if you'd like to see a more detailed look at the actual body. And of course, the overall, you know, paintwork and everything for this Pteranodon, you can get a look at that by checking out the review, which I will include a link to at the end of the review here. So these Hasbro Jurassic Park Alpha Pteranodon are all awesome. Every single version, no matter which one you go for, it is a fantastic version of a Pteranodon. And far and away, in my opinion, some of Hasbro's best work in the Jurassic franchise. Of course, you do have some 
screw holes on the underside of the pteranodon, but the rest of the entire figure is just so gorgeous, like I can easily look past that. The sculpt is extremely highly detailed, looks pretty similar to a Jurassic Park 3 pteranodon overall. I don't know that I would say it's absolutely picture perfect, but it is very close. And uh, as a whole, the fine detail is extremely crisp and also some of Hasbro's best work when it comes to fine detail and the you know overall screen accuracy i would say these pteranodons are probably some of the best that they had ever produced the massive size of these straight out of the gate makes them extremely impressive but then you tackle that onto the fact that you also have amazing colors through the course of each and every one of them and they're all painted similarly where they have all that variation of color throughout making them have some of the most lifelike paint and lifelike color that I've ever seen on any Jurassic toy which is another of the many reasons why I absolutely love these figures you have some pretty nice articulation nothing over the top amazing but you also have a fun action feature with the wing flapping I love the fact that you do have a sound effect effect for the actual wings flapping you also have the injury on the side which is pretty fun again pretty much a standard when it comes to the jurassic park 3 figures but uh the fact that when you poke that area it screams is also really fun and you have various sound effects through the course of the entire pteranodon which is also really fun so like i said i cannot recommend these figures enough if you have not acquired one of these quite yet i highly recommend searching them out on ebay obviously they're long discontinued, long retired, so it's not something that you're going to probably be able to find for retail unless you're lucky, but they are still very, very high up on my recommendation list that you really need to pick them up again if you can get them for a good price i definitely recommend grabbing any or all of these so of course i'm very much so interested in your thoughts on these figures so let me know in the comment section of course please like and subscribe that helps the videos out massively helps my channel out massively and i will see you guys in the next review thanks for watching